Thanks for clicking on this video, another part of the top five players in NFL teams history series. If you've missed any videos that have come so far in this series, you can catch up by clicking on the playlist link in the description box down below. Got about, what, 10 or 12 more teams to get through, I think, and I'll have them all done. Um, also, also, I'm writing about the Chicago Bears for ProFootballSpot.com. You can check out some of my work there by going to ProFootballSpot.com. I've also included the link to my most recent article in the description box down below. So click on it, read it, and let me know what you think of it. Now I get to the topic of this video, and that is the five greatest players in the history of the New York Giants franchise. And this is a franchise that dates back to the very beginnings of the National Football League, one of the key signature marquee franchises franchises in the history of the National Football League and one of the most prestigious franchises in the history of the National Football League, a team that claims a total of four Super Bowl championships and four other NFL championships, a total of eight world titles throughout their history, and 12 times where they actually made it to the league's championship game via, via Super Bowl or usually the NFL championship game and came up short. So that's eight title wins and 12 title losses. This is a New York Giants team that throughout its history has found a way to be in the mix a lot. They've had a lot of great teams and a lot of great players, and this was not the easiest list to do, in part because I knew with so many Hall of Famers throughout their history, I was going to have to leave some off the list. Guys like Benny Friedman and Morris Badgro and Frank Gifford and Arnie Weinmeister and Ken Strong and Tuffy Lehmans and Andy Robostelli and Sam Huff and Harry Carson, just to name uh, the Hall of Famers, and that's not even to mention some of the other really good players the Giants have had throughout their history, the guys like Charlie Connerlys and the Del Schaffners and so on and so forth. But ultimately, it's about determining the best of the best, and I think I've done a good job here, in my opinion, of course I'm going to say that, of assembling what I feel are the top five Giants players of all time. I'll start off this list at number five, and I will go to recent times, or more recent times, that is, and look at Michael Strahan, the second round pick out of Texas Southern in the 1993 NFL draft. Excuse me. Played his entire 15 year career with the New York Giants. During that time, he was one of the premier all-around defensive ends in the National Football League. You can measure his impact and greatness to a certain degree via statistics, but I don't think that always told the whole story. He wasn't just some one-dimensional pass rusher. He was a guy that, to me, could do everything that you would want a defensive end to do a seven-time Pro Bowler, a four-time All-Pro, a two-time league leader in sacks. Even though it was done somewhat controversially with the last sack, sure, he still holds the single-season record for most sacks by a player in any NFL season. He had a total of six seasons with 10 or more sacks. He was the 2001 NFL Defensive Player of the Year. He was a member of the NFL's 2000s All-Decade Team, a two-time NFC champion, a one-time Super Bowl champion, really especially towards the tail end of his career. He was the leader in that locker room. He was the leader of that organization. And you could see in part with that 2007 season in particular where that team really rallied behind him. And it, even at the tail end of his career, when he wasn't the same player that he was, they bought into him, they believed in him, and they followed him, and they won a Super Bowl You know, in one of the great upsets in sports history beating that undefeated at the time Patriots team that looked unstoppable and I think with that Strahan to me undoubtedly does deserve a place on this list even though you could argue for guys like especially an Andy Robostelli um, you know Robostelli played with better players around him during that time a lot of Hall of Famers on those teams of the 50s and early 60s as a result Strahan spent more years with the team. I think he had more overall impact, more importance to the team, and that's why I put him at number five. Number four, going back to those Giants teams of the 50s, looking at Emlyn Tunnell, the first black player in the history of the New York football Giants organization, an undrafted player out of Iowa. Interesting thing about him was he originally went to, I believe it was Toledo. Then he suffered a broken neck, a bad neck injury, and he tried to volunteer and enlist in the Army, and I believe it was either the Navy or the Marines, and he got turned down because that neck injury was so bad. Eventually, I think he ended up uh, signing up with the Coast Guard, serving a couple years with them, going back to college in Iowa, and this was at a time, unfortunately, in the NFL where racial segregation was still a very big part of the game. There was still a huge color barrier there that was just really hard to break through, and in particular, black players just weren't getting drafted. So Emlyn Tunnell ends up undrafted, and all he does, he ends up packing up 
and going to New York, you know, asking for a chance, asking for a trial, be given that chance. And it was one of the best things the New York Giants organization ever did during his 11 seasons from 1948 to 1958. I think Emlyn Tunnell was really, truly the premier safety of his era, an eight-time Pro Bowl or a four-time first-team All-Pro. His 74 career interceptions while with the New York Giants would still rank him second, second, on the all-time list. He finished with 79 for his career, which does rank him second on the all-time list behind Paul Krause. His 74 interceptions during his 11th season with the Giants put him again second on the all-time list. And this was again in an era where teams didn't throw the ball a lot. So he had a lot fewer opportunities to basically average about six to seven interceptions every single season. He was a member of the 1950s NFL All-Decade team. He was a member of the NFL's 50th anniversary team. He was a member of that 1956 NFL championship team of the New York Giants and played in several other championship games with the Giants during that time. I'm Lynn Tunnell, one of the premier safeties in the history of the National Football League, and I think in the grand scheme of things is actually a little bit criminally underrated in terms of his dominance and his greatness and his importance and meaning to both the Giants organization and to the National Football League as whole. Number three, I'll go back to those teams of the Giants of the 50s and the 60s, and the best player on that team, and I think most everybody would agree, would be Rosie Brown, Roosevelt Brown. And think about this. He spent 13 years with the New York Giants, 13 years. But he was drafted in the 27th round, the 321st overall selection out of Morgan State back in 1953. Today, he would have been undrafted. Today, 321 picks, that means you're undrafted because there's only, what, 255, 256 picks every single year. Rosie Brown, during his time, was, along with, let's say, like a Jim Parker, the premier left tackle of his time. He was a nine-time Pro Bowler, a six-time All-Pro, a member of the 1950s NFL All-Decade team. He played in six NFL title games during his 13-year career with the New York Giants. He was a member of that 1956 NFL Championship Giants team, a member of the NFL's 75th anniversary team, and truly to me, again, similar to an Emlyn Tunnell, one of the criminally underrated players in the history of the National Football League, which I find to be incredibly ironic because these guys spent their careers in the biggest media market in the country. And with the media's East Coast bias, you would think, if anything, these players would be overrated in the grand scheme of history. And for some reason, they end up falling through the cracks. And maybe it's, again, because they played on teams with so many great players and Hall of Famers around them that they didn't quite get the shine and recognition that they deserve. But Rosie Brown, one of the great offensive tackles of all time, and to me clearly belongs at number three on this list. Number two on this list, I go back to the earlier days of the New York Giants franchise, one of the premier players in national football in the National Football League, excuse me, throughout the 30s and early to mid 40s, and that is Mel Hine out of Washington State, who was the premier center of his time and is still arguably perhaps the greatest center in NFL history. He's the only center in NFL history to win the league's most valuable player award, and he did that in 1938. He was a two-time NFL champion, a member of the 1930s NFL All-Decade team, a member of the NFL's 50th and 75th anniversary team. He played in seven, think about this again, played in seven NFL championship games and was the star of stars on those teams, the best player on those teams. Sure, they only won two of those seven championship games, but again, during his 15 seasons with the New York Giants, half of his seasons pretty much, they played in the championship game of the league, and that means something. And they were a team, again, that was built around who? Mel Hine. He was the driving force behind that. He was thought of so highly with the first 40 plus years of the history of the National Football League that in 1963 he was named one of the charter members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. To me, for most any other organization, Mel Hine would always be the greatest player in their history. And I know the NFL a few years back when they did their list of the 100 greatest players of all time, Mel Hine was on there. But Mel Hine was far, far, far too low on that list. No question about it. You could penalize him maybe for playing in a time where you had segregation and black players weren't allowed to play by and large in the NFL. You could sit there and blame him for this and that. But the bottom line is he dominated against his level of competition like few ever have. A center winning a league's MVP award. Just picture that and feature that for a second. That'd be like Nick Mangold or one of the Pouncy Boys winning the MVP award in today's NFL. Incredible. 
But I think, again, when all is said and done, unless you're a big-time historian of the Giants, I believe in the older days being the best days, I think everybody agrees that the greatest player in the history of the New York Giants and arguably one of the five greatest players in the history of the National Football League is Lawrence Taylor. The second overall selection out of North Carolina in the 1981 NFL Draft changed the game. He changed defenses. He changed offenses. The reason Joe Gibbs came up with the single back offense and went with two tight ends was because he had to figure out a way to block Lawrence Taylor. You couldn't run away from Lawrence Taylor because he just cut you from behind. You couldn't single block him with a running back or a tight end because he'd blow right by him or through him. You couldn't single block him with a left tackle because he would just go right by him. Lawrence Taylor, one of the truly dominant players in the history of the National Football League and arguably the most dominant and best defensive player in the history of the National Football League. A 10-time Pro Bowler, 8-time All-Pro, 3-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, the 1986 NFL MVP. Alan Page did it in 71 where he was both the Defensive Player of the Year and the league's most valuable player. Lawrence Taylor was the second player to do that in 1986 as Defensive Player of the Year and NFL MVP. That's just not something that happens every day. He was a member of two Super Bowl championship teams. He was a member of the 80s All-Decade Team, the NFL's 75th Anniversary Team. He had seven straight seasons with 10 or more sacks. And keep in mind that so many times it wasn't just about sacks with him. The consistent pressure that he caused, the consistent way that he was able to get inside of the minds of quarterbacks and offensive linemen and backs and tight ends and offensive coordinators and head coaches, he was dominant and changed the game. Imagine if every team had to single one-on-one -on -one man block Lawrence Taylor every single time he rushed the passer. He would have set sack records that would have never been touched. You best believe that. His 13 years in the New York Giants organization, he revitalized the Giants organization. He changed the fate of the Giants organization because after the days of the 50s and 60s, there were some lean times for the New York Giants. But Lawrence Taylor was a player that came in and changed the climate and changed everything and was the player that those two Super Bowl championship teams of 86 and 90 were ultimately built around. And I think, again, beyond question, when you talk about greatness of true greatness, in players. You're talking about LT Lawrence Taylor, arguably the greatest linebacker of all time, arguably the greatest defensive player of all time, and arguably one of the five greatest players in the history of the National Football League. So it goes without saying to me that he's the greatest player in the history of the New York Giants.